All right, welcome back everybody. So this week we're looking at the CIC water-based conversion coating. And I've done a lot of other videos on this product, but I just wanted to do one kind of conclusive video that captured everything that I know about it because I've learned some new things in the past months and I just want to share those with you. And we're just going to kind of talk about it. All right, so the product comes in a clear and a pigmented um, all the way from a flat to a gloss. Now the sheen degrees in water base are all over the map. Um, this one, um, I believe it's 10 or 15 degrees on the flat and on the satin it's like 25 to 30 degrees. I'm not sure what the semi gloss is and I think the gloss is a, um, a 90. Um, it's the same uh, for the pigmented. Now where I buy um, my material from, which is Annex Paint in uh, California, and Greg Saunders is my rep, which I will leave his information in the description below if you want to you know, try this product out. Um, they don't carry all the sheens and everything, so sometimes like with uh, um, the pigmented, I'll have to buy a satin and a gloss, and then I just mix it you know, till I get the sheen that I want in between. Um, I think they carry um, uh, everything in the um, clear version or you could put a clear over it however you wanted to. Now one of the things that we're really discussing in this video is the crosslinker. So a lot of people are confused about what crosslinkers do. Okay, now this actually, um, I'm putting in my own words, but this actually, I got this information from the chemist at CIC and what this product what this does is is it takes all the moisture out of the top coat as it's drying so it leaves you with a tighter um, molecular stru structure so if you think about it as um, threads being inter interwoven with each other so this might be with it without it cross-linked and this is what it's going to be interlocked with it cross-linked okay now, one of the interesting things and one of the cool things about this product is you can add anywhere between 1% and 10% crosslinker, okay? And if you do crosslink it, um, let's say you crosslink it 2%, then you can re-crosslink the material without it going bad up to 10%. So if I shot this on one day and I put 5% in it, I could come back the next day and put another 5% in it, up to 10%. Um, and then it doesn't ruin the material. Some of the other manufacturers, once you've cross-linked it, it's done. So that's kind of cool about, about this. Now, I will tell you up front that this is kind of pricey. Now, I did a test, and you're going to see it in this video where I added 5 to 10%. And my personal opinion is, is I would only add 5%. So, if this is $150 if 5%, that will get five gallons of product. Now, what I do is I only put it on the final coat. So technically, I'm going to get 10 to 11 gallons of product. All right. So in what situations would I use the crosslinker? Okay. Um, in the situation of a pigmented, if it's anything uh, semi-gloss and below, I'm going to use the crosslinker because adding pigments to the finish reduces the chemical resistance of the finish. Um, I've seen that in previous tests and on and on and on. Now on the on the clear side, the clear by itself, and you're going to see this in in the uh, testing scenario here that once you get into the clear satin. Um, it does offer a little bit more in terms of the alcohol resistance, but as far as if it's worth putting it in the coating, it's kind of debatable to an extent with me. However, if you do a flat um, and you need the chemical resistance, I think it's a must. All right. Um, now, in my situation, anytime I'm doing a kitchen and bathroom, I'm going to use it. Uh, if I'm doing furniture, um, you know, this just going to go in someone's house or bookshelf or a built-in. I'm probably not going to put the crosslinker in it. Tabletops, um, I would probably put the crosslinker in it. Um, so that's just kind of my opinion on this. And um, let's go ahead and let's just take a look 
at the testing and let's see what this thing really does. All right, so I just want to show you the adhesion on the product. This stuff sticks to just about everything. Um, the adhesion is really, really great. And when you actually add the cross linker, I've noticed that it um, it sticks even more. And that's just an observation that I've that I've had. Um, so let's take a look at that. Now this is over the Sherwin Williams Solo, and I just did that just so that you could see this stuff better. But as you can see, I got nothing on there. Okay nothing came out whatsoever so the adhesion is absolutely excellent on this product all right so let's take a look at this um pretty much we're just denting the wood there okay so we're going to look at the chemical resistance of it without the cross linker and then what it does with the cross linkers added now for the sake of time on some of this, I'm gonna show it and then I'm just gonna do it on the other ones and then show you the results just for, you know, cause I'm limited on my time. Let's take a look at the denatured alcohol. All right, now as you can see, pretty much what it does is like, it kind of glosses the surfaces and takes it up to a semi-gloss maybe. Um, all right, let's take a look at the lacquer thinner. Similar reaction with that, same thing. And then let's take a look at the acetone. And we're going to get <clears throat> exactly the same thing, just glossing the surface. All right. All right, now let's look at when you add the cross linker to it, um, what you get. Now this is a 5%. All right, with the cross linker 5% added denatured alcohol. Okay, so on that one, it pretty much, there's a little bit of a ring out here, but it pretty much, once that flashes off, it has pretty much no effect on it whatsoever. Um, so basically, if you put the cross linker in, your denatured alcohol has zero effect on it, all right? Lacquer thinner. Now the lacquer thinner is similar to, with it out being cross linked and the acetone is about the same. Now let's look at it at 10%. Okay, so here's the um, cross linker with 10%. So we're getting similar um, results as we did with the 5%. It's really good on the denatured alcohol. Lacquer thinner is the same as the satin. And then you've got a little bit less on the acetone. So, um, I mean, there is a slight difference as you go up, but I don't know if it's enough to warrant the, the extra cost or not. Okay. So here's where it gets really interesting on the flat. Now this is the flat with no cross linker in it. Now you see how it's like cut through that. Now here's with the 5% cross linker added to it. We're back to the glossing. Okay. So this is a case that if you're going to use a flat where it's beneficial to use that cross linker. Now this is the same thing that happens with the pigmented is you will see this sort of thing going on. If you add the cross linker to it, you get the same thing here. Now, all right, now this is the pigmented. Um, as you can see the denatured alcohol here, uh, you can't really see anything um, because this is the uh, a satin product. So you just can't see it on the white. The lacquer thinner, there's a little bit right there. And then the acetone, pretty much nothing. Um, now I will say this is in line. If you're looking for that conversion coating, um, same durability. I think that adding the 5% cross linker gives you the same um, chemical resistance as a solvent based conversion varnish. Okay, so now this is the CIC um, 
water-based conversion coating over a polyester primer, which is basically the equivalent of spraying Bondo. Um, now this is something, that, now why would you want to do this? Well, I had a situation where I was refinishing a bunch of in, interior birch doors and it was just sucking up so much finish. So I was talking to Greg and he suggested this product, but we hadn't really tried it. No one had really tried it with the water base over the top of it. Now just to show you, I'm not going to show you every one of the um, situations here. I'm just going to show you acetone and then I'm going to tell you what I did differently on each one of them. All right, now this is the poly primer where I let it cure for a couple days and then I put the water base over it, which is what you don't want to do. All right, so if I keep rubbing this, I got to rub this quite a bit, but you'll see that I'm rubbing that coating right off, okay? Now, on the flip side, if I do it within a 12 hour window, then I don't have that issue. All right, that's like 40 rubs um, with acetone. And the adhesion is still there. I just thought that was something cool that I would show you that you can shoot um, this water base over two component um, products, which kind of seems silly, but if you needed a primer with a higher build, faster build, um, with more solid so that you're putting less coatings on, then it is a possibility. It's kind of up to you guys, but I just thought that was something cool that I would I would show you. So let's talk about the final thoughts on the product. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the CIC water-based conversion coating? Well, it's obviously one of my favorite and it's my go-to for kitchen cabinetry, um, period the end, bar none. Um, a couple things I want to say, the crosslinker is, um, a lot of people get sticker shock with that, but again, if you do the math and you do it the way I suggest, only adding 5% on your final coat, um, you're only looking at, you're going to get about 10 to 11 gallons out of that, so it's going to add 10 to $15 more um, depending on how you, you, know, you crosslink it. So essentially what you're getting is um, it's going to be about 75 to 80 dollars out the door. Um, and you know I'm saying plus or minus five. It depends on your cost and shipping and all that stuff. Now how does that compare with a um, water-based 2K polyurethane? Well one of the advantages to using a crosslinker, especially in this product is, is it doesn't hurt it. So if you crosslink it, you can come back and use it again unless you crosslink it over the 10%. So you could crosslink a whole gallon, um, only use half of it, keep it, and use it again and re-crosslink it. So that's something that's pretty cool. With a 2K urethane, you can't do that. Once you catalyze it, you got your four to six hour pot life or shorter, whatever the manufacturer is, and you're done. So I think that's a really big advantage um, to this product. Now, it is questionable when you get into the satin clear and above on whether it really does any good or not. Um, it's helping it a little bit, but it's kind of really hard to tell the difference. So I think where it shines is in the pigmented and in the flat. So if you're shooting a flat clear and you need that extra chemical resistance, I would add that to it. Um, if you're shooting a um, <clears throat> pigmented, I would certainly add that to it if you need that extra chemical resistance. Um, all right, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for me on this product. Um, I hope you liked the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you want the notifications, hit the bell button at the top and follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Eric Reason. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>